All right, We're folks. We're ready to go. We've been already talking for about five minutes. Would have been good stuff to record, but welcome to episode 18. <laughs> 18. 18. It's going good, yeah. And although Terry's stuck in about 2002 now in technology. I'm up I'm, on it. I got white. I got fisheye. I got all the stuff. I'm up to now about 20... 18 maybe 17 18 i'm feeling pretty good i figured out my headphones i can actually hear myself properly awesome i work people will know i worked my headphones out many episodes ago well you still sound like a cardboard box though we got to get you a better <laughs> that's because they cost 20 pounds <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but actually even on that though so i was also did some investigation I was trying to figure out why because i have a good camera and you look good on here when I'm talking to you, but by the time then I render it and upload it, sometimes it's like it's blurry or, or I remember the last one, the sound had dropped and all this kind of stuff. Mm. I found out it's because we're using Zoom. So Zoom is capturing everything in a cloud. It's not like on our desktop. Right. Um, and if there's any interference there, we're screwed. There's nothing we can really do about it. So I was looking at other options. So there is another option I'm looking at where as I'm recording this, it's saving to my desktop. So it'll be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then perfect. we just upload that. Yeah. But the problem is it doesn't offer a green screen and you know how we love our. Oh, listen, behind you is just a, just a, a French door. <laughs> exactly. Behind here is, I mean, I'm in a extra spare bedroom. So, <laughs> so that, that's, that's the only thing. So I'm trying to work around with that, but oh, they will. We're going to say my back is healing up finally. Today. good 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 that's why i'm celebrating there's another reason i'm celebrating the there's another celebration but a um disappointment terry what is what what is it what's wrong <sighs> today it was announced we're going into four weeks of lockdown oh we just saw oh we just on our down. way out of lockdown yeah we've been well, we've we just, been we in lockdown we, we had a teaser we had like a month three months i know we've I been know. in lockdown i know i'm moving to texas or florida that's crazy stuff yeah crazy but it's you crazy. i mean although we're in lockdown you they've shut all the shops right but it's not as strict they're not put you know they're out giving fines out to people but like out in canada it was bad in canada when they were arresting people and battering people on the it's streets and still same happening. as it was in victoria yeah it's still happening canada is the worst definitely north america uh, right now, yeah, it's like it's, it's like Australia. Uh, depending on where you go to, how intense it is. Uh, Quebec is pretty damn intense. Where we are here in Ontario. Um, anyway, whatever. So it kind of depressed. Not depressed. No, pissed me off to be honest. Yeah, so it I is said, annoying. I said, Fuck it. I'm gonna have myself a drink. I promise, Terry. I'm not gonna get drunk on this one, but. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk with Vicodins. <laughs> yeah, with Vicodins. <laughs> People loved it. People loved the drunk, loose, Vic all drugged up Scott. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. So tonight, oh, this, this is what I was going to say. You, last week, you said you had an announcement about a book or something, but you didn't say it. That is true because you just continued on talking and I never got a chance <laughs> to get it in. <laughs> what, what was you going to say? <laughs> So it's um, it's funny. I did another podcast this week with uh, the Drew uh, Drew Experience Drew Experience Drew uh, Experience, and um, he hasn't put it up yet. But I mentioned on there. So um, he was asking me and how it came up on there because he was asking me again back back to how it all started. And I talked about how the blog started just with me actually literally going back into martial arts and going to Steve and going, "Hey, I love writing." Uh, Sensei Steve, and I'd love to just to, to do um, an online journal, basically, of me coming back and, you know, your philosophies and stuff like that. And I wanted his permission. He said, yeah. So I started writing this mm -hmm. journal and it caught on. And, yeah. and then people, that's how it really, really caught on. It was the blog. 160,000 people caught on. Craziness, craziness. And I never expected it. It's funny. I told Drew the story, too. It's kind of hilarious that... Um, at that time, I was trying, I didn't like, like my job and stuff. And I was trying to figure out something to do online to make some money. So I looked at different things. And I actually invested in a couple of things to try. All flopped, right? To try to monetize it. My blog, I've never monetized. I've never made a penny off it. And it's the one thing that I did for fun. And it poof, expl exploded. It's hilarious. So anyway, fl flash forward now. 
So I used to do all these things, but just me, my time in it. And then after a while, I started writing articles like uh, cause just my own interest because I couldn't find anything good. So the history, yeah. of, history of Kyokushin or the history of this, or why do we say that? Or what does us mean? Or blah, 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 whatever, right? These are important questions that they people, are. people just, pe people just, like we said, they say, like, they don't question it. Yeah. And that's the reason I wanted to look into it. Like we, I would hear words like, well, Mushin, what is Mushin? What does it mean? What's the history and all this stuff? So I'd write an article on it. So then I was I started getting contacted actually just recently. Uh, people were asking me, uh, hey, why don't you just take all your blog and just release it in a book form so people could just read it? And I was like, whoa. So I went to my partner, Ariel, and I was like, what do you think? Is this kind of silly because it's all online? And she's like, "Yeah, but some people would love to have it just as a reference, just the thing." Yeah. So I was yeah. Like, okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just editing up all my uh, all my blog entries and just putting them in a in a book. That'd be awesome. That'd be good because there's a lot of information contained in all, a lot of research you put in. Good nuggets. Nuggets like gold, golden <laughs> nuggets. And then it's, there's a lot of you got well months and months and months of research looking into oh my these articles God, yeah. sometimes yeah. i would like i'm so so i'd be in class or something and somebody would bring up something or some question would come home i would go home from, <laughs> from class i'd be on a computer till like 3 30 in the morning have to get up seven o'clock to go to work but because i couldn't leave it alone i had to find out and stuff so do you know uh, why because i'm uh no i can't say that on because you're a student Oh. Not a follower. Oh, she on. Oh, she on. What episode was that? Episode ten or something like that. Eleven. <laughs> oh, no. Be go a student. Back to our we got book. Yeah. Here. <laughs> so that would be awesome. You're putting it into yeah. a book. There's loads of information, and it would be a nice reference point because someone yeah. could say, "What the fuck does us mean?" Oh, let me open my book. Page, boom, and it's an article on it. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to call it? I don't know. Not way. Scotty's, Scotty's Golden Nugget. Scotty's Golden Nugget. <laughs> I have a, a return to the Marshall Way or something. Because I had taken off, like, because I had done martial arts for years since I was a kid. And then I took off almost 10 years. And then I went back into kitchen. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. Whatever. This is ah, a reference the name thing, will anyway. come. That'd be nothing, good. That'd be awesome. Nothing special. Just a, a good reference. But I'm sure you, you could get that. You could get that. Um, printed out, bind it up quite nicely yeah. in nice little like booklet form. Bang them out, put them in them, keep it small. A four, uh, A five envelope. Bang, bang them out. Pretty much, or do it through Amazon or something. I don't know. I haven't even looked at that yeah. part yet. Right now, I just, nah. uh, I just uh, downloaded it all, and now I'm going through and adding because there was some, you know, because it was just a blog before, so I find yeah, a few little bits. Yeah, spelling mistakes and stuff like that. And there's stuff in the blog. References to my ex-wife that I had to delete. I delete them out. <laughs> we won't mention them. And I suppose there's stuff that you've done in earlier blogs. Mm -hmm. Like, because I remember you did, you did a blog once uh, talking about Oyama's training and yep. this. And I read and I was like. Oh, yeah. Oh, Come well, on, now. Uh, uh, actually, blah, 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 blah. Which yeah. prompted you in to do some more research into it. I did. And you know what? I'm not sure what our topic specifically is tonight, but that's a whole weird and can of worms to itself. I know people like to think that Masoyama was the be all end all and everything they read oh, is gospel truth. Hush, tracks the, now. You could I know. Be going, I know. You could be going into murky water. I know, but I'm not going to take this too far other than I think people should just be aware. Just take things with a grain of salt. And, you know, it was a very different age. It was a time yeah. where, you know, it was a different type of marketing. You got to be yeah. careful these days because anything you say and anything you and I say or anybody else says can be verified pretty damn quickly because of online, right? Because mm -hmm. everything's recorded. Everything's there. Back then, they didn't have it. So a lot of it was by word and whatever, but you still were trying to market your thing. I'm not saying that everything that Sosai said was a BS. Definitely, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you got to take things. It's like the old adage. There, there's, people, there's people around him as well, though. Exactly. They, 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 typical exactly. example, right? The, the killing of the bulls, right? Right. Killing a bull. Now, it says it was a bull, which is a male bovine. Yes. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not a, a thousand pound Spanish fighting bull. 
No, no one said bull. that. This is, a, this is a male animal. It was a yeah. Bull. Yeah. yeah, and it was destined for the slaughterhouse. Yes. So that means it's not a young, healthy bull. It's an old, worked bull. And it was in Japan in the 60s. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be like an oxen-style bull for yeah. work in the farms. Yeah. So, it, so you have to read between. We hear it today and go, a bull. The Spanish bull, like the Spanish fight. That's what he's chopped his own off and smacked, picked him up, <laughs> suplexed the bull. <laughs> and, and it is people, people, add, people add the bits in then. Yeah, exactly. And um, we talked about this before legend. It, yeah. It's legend. you, you nev never confirm nor deny anything that happened. You're just like, yeah, something like that. And let the, let the other people, this is why oh, it's, Source I did amazing feats. Absolutely. And then There's no uh, other little, they didn't, and then other people think like, oh yeah, the, the bull killer, I killed bulls, and and the imagination runs wild then. Yeah. Of you know, people, people, and people have done drawings of like source. I stood in the middle of a bull ring, ten bulls rushing towards him, and he's fighting <laughs> them all, and it's kind of that uh, that imagination that goes wild then. But people yeah. today will be like, oh, I can't find any footage of him fighting a Spanish bull. Yeah. Didn't yeah. happen. It's bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on it. All that stuff. Even the stuff like him fighting himself in an all Japan tournament. And I dug and I actually ended up finding a Japanese article on it. And uh, so, but back then too, things weren't publicized like they are now. It'd be no. just a little thing in a, in, a, in a reference, in a sports section, in a paper or something. You know what I mean? It's whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Um, no, like that's it. Uh, but like this, but this is what we've said as well, though. Don't just be martial arts are a cult, yes. right? Kyokushin yep. is a cult. Yeah. But all lots of styles are a cult. I've been, well, I say, fortunate enough, lucky enough. The Ronin years away, I kind of fell out of that because I was in, you know, I was drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah. Well, you know, as a brown belt, as a young kid going up through it. Yes, you know, my goal is to knock a bull out with one punch. That's what I'm training for. I start made, off on You made sheep. it to a lamb, though, didn't you? <laughs> I made it to a, no, I made it to a full-size adult sheep and worked my way up. <laughs> yeah. But um, it is. But then I had that break from it, and I could see... I could see it for what it was, and you know, you, then then you start to realize that yeah, these these Shians, these these people that are put on pedestals, yeah, they're no different to, to me or you, yeah. But, you know, we're all the same people, we're the same, yeah. So I I could start to see the cult sort of side of it, yeah. and certainly when I was uh, doing my own research into things, and you'd speak to people and you'd be like, oh, well, what's that for? Oh, because of this. You don't really know what you're talking about, do you? You've never act same as the cuckoo spit story. You've mm -hmm. never actually remember the cuckoo spit story? No. Back in episode eight. Was I drunk? You might have been on Vicodins <laughs> or something. <laughs> no, remind we, me. We, I'm not joking. No, we were we were talking about stories that get ex handed down through time, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And people don't question. Oh, them. oh yeah, yeah. The one that you yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I do. So yeah. and that's it. And you're like I caught a you, fish this big. Yeah, and it's like you're not you're not questioning it. You've just you've been told this verbatim, and you've carried it through all your life. You've never actually questioned it. It's those type of people that are drinking the Kool Aid that can't think for themselves. Uh, and I've spotted those people, and it and it led me to go to a different path. It led me onto that path of, yeah, I want to. I'm going to be up in the clouds, soaring with the eagles, but my feet will be firmly on the ground as well. Absolutely. You know. you know what? There's no better time than right now because it's the atmosphere, the cultural, political atmosphere too. Everybody is like cancel culture and all this stuff. Mm. You can't question anything. You can't say anything, right? Yes, you can. Question. It makes you intelligent. Yeah, question things. Yeah, there's question. nothing wrong with it. Yes, it doesn't make you a conspiracy theorist. It just makes you a questioner. <laughs> it's yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. Exactly. Right. What? So someone made a comp. Well, that, right. We're getting on with the show now, guys. Now, now the show started. This Take is a great watch. show so far. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Someone messaged about weapon work using weapons. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what they said exactly, but uh, should weapons Can't a person's start? name? Can you give them a shout out? I can't remember. <laughs> God. Was it in our, was it in you our should comments? have a look. I've been it was in the. 
there's on the YouTube comments on one of the lo- I think I do you know I think it was I think it was the um the guy who was who's who was donated to us. Carlos. Yeah, but I can't find um, I anyway. think Okay, we'll look good. I think. We were yeah. just saying about weapon work and uh, weapons should be are they I will good track it down and make sure it's in the uh, description. Yeah, are they beneficial for the karate? Mm-hmm. Um I've done weapons since uh, since a young kid. Mm-hmm. Since since I've started karate, I've done mm-hmm. the nunchaku and the bow. Mm-hmm. They they were the two main yeah, sort of well. yeah. weapons that went along with karate. Um, so and and again, you know, before I did karate, I grew up as a ninja turtle. So you know, <laughs> bits of sticks. You'd have two bits of sticks, and you'd be swinging them around, pretending they're swords and stuff. So well, I've I, always been into weaponry. Funny you say the two sticks thing because as a teenager I studied uh, Filipino martial arts, escrima. Yeah. So it was two sticks, <laughs> and yeah. it, it was pretty cool. They do it uh, at least the style that I did. Uh, it's Arnis, right? Um, it's they work it backwards. So you start with sticks. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wish I could do it here. I, I'm gonna smack my mic. There's a, something called Sinawali drill. Uh, anyway, you start with sticks. Then once you get, become proficient with the sticks, you, you drop the sticks and then it turns. Then you in. work with your hands. Yes. Yeah. But it starts with a weapon first. Uh, well, weapon work is good. Weapon work, weapon work actually helps. Like you said, your, your hands helps your posture. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you, when you're coming for the cut or you're coming for the strike, it's a good movement because the weapon is just an extension of your hand. People think like, I've got a weapon. I'm hitting you with a weapon. I'm hitting you with my hand. It's just extended. Yeah, I mean, people sometimes forget that, uh, you know, we do karate, which is empty hand. And the only reason they did empty hand is because they couldn't get their hands on a weapon. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, you want your hands on a weapon. Yeah. Right? So it is. And we, we've got lots of the Japanese weapons, like the, you know, the, the rice flails, the nunchaku yeah, used tonfa. for, you know, yeah, Tomfo was a leg off a chair, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, it was a... No, it was a handle on a yes, grinder. I, a you t- you grinder. were going to tell me what it is? Yes, 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 Shihan. <laughs> I was going to tell you so what the Tomfa, you've got Karma, which is basically Kobudu. the bicycle. Kobudo, the study of weapon work. Yeah. Um, but then, see, I now I grew up. I was a ninja fan. I fucking oh, loved ninja suit. And all this. I, I had it all. I had it all. <laughs> I had my own ninja suit. I had everything. I studied. <laughs> I studied ninjutsu. I look at the um, where they were in the mountains. I used to know all of it. I used to know all everything about it. Terry, I got. I, I, I got to tell you something. You're a ninja. It's all fake. You know that, right? <laughs> it's not. Yes. A I guy was a fake. From- a guy from Listen, New York. I could crawl into your house, hide in your fucking toilet for four days, and then spear you to death. Yeah, that's it's called, part it's of called my a Navy training. SEAL. That's my <laughs> ninja training. Listen, man. So there's a guy from the UK I found, and I, I wish I could remember his name now, who was really deep into the ninjutsu stuff, and but something to us, to our thing earlier, he was something, something didn't smell right. Right, mm-hmm. so he's in Japan, and he starts digging into the archives, literally going to the libraries and going to this and that. And he came to find out that, uh, yeah, it's all nonsense. And nonsense all, in what way? All this modern ninja stuff. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, mo- yeah, modern ninja stuff. Toga, a pile of shit. Ru, and uh, ha, ha, what's the guy Hasaki? It's the Bujin. Kasumi, it's the, what's the fuck? Is Hats, Hatsu, um, Hatsurama or something. The Whatever. Fifty ninth horseshit. Grand. It's all niche. made up. Oh yeah, bullshit. anything today. Anything today is bollocks. Bollocks. Yeah, yeah. And then go, the ninja go back, suits like, and stuff. You want to know an amazing ninja suit? Right here, I'm wearing it. Look at that. I fit right in. <laughs> you today you would be. That would be your ninja suit today. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I am. No, you bald ninjas had hair. <laughs> As I said I've earlier, never seen a bald ninja. Never seen a bald ninja. Grass doesn't grow on a busy street. <laughs> you dropped this into a conversation earlier, and I was like, what? What the fuck are you on about? He's on about his bald head. And, oh, yeah, definitely the modern, sh- like, like this grandmasters, and do it, doing it today anyway, is bollocks. Yeah, I probably anyway. offended a bunch of people right now, but you know what? I'll put that guy's uh, stuff in there, and you can attack him. 
Um, anyway. It, 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 but weapon work we were talking weapon about. Work. But so it's when fun. I was aside from whether it's real or not, sorry to cut you off, it's fucking also fun. It's so yeah. fun. I loved when I was a kid working with uh, first it was nunchucks, and then I did Filipino martial arts. I loved the sticks, right? And uh, I, I just loved it. Um, and then when I did some Okinawan karate, um, tonfo was the other thing I really liked, and bow because we did bow also, mm-hmm. and bow and stuff. So yeah, it's fun stuff, amazing. It is, and I, I grew so te- eleven. I started karate, so mm-hmm. by age twelve, I was using weapons. I was using nunchakus and stuff, mm-hmm. and and as well as a kid, you know, you'd have sticks and stuff, and you pretend to be fighting yeah. with them. You know, grew up on like American Ninja, yeah, American yeah. Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Three Little Ninjas, all yeah. of these sort of films. Yeah, obviously they're a bit bit after your time. You were already adult with kids by they came out. I have no kids <laughs> that I'm aware of. <laughs> no, none that I none that are in contact with me. <laughs> so yeah, the we- the weapons are fun to play with. But then, older, I got into them properly, and instead of just twiddling, I started studying them and looking at them properly. You just raised the question for me, though. Back way back then, when those ninja movies came out, remember Revenge of the Ninja, Return of yeah. the Ninja? There was yeah. one called Ninja Three. And it confused me so badly because what was one, two, and <laughs> there, there was no one and two. What was it called? Which Ninja one? Ninja three. But it might just be three ninjas. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I love those movies when I was a kid, man. <laughs> I did. I love those. I used to have shurikens. I used to make anything that was pointy. I <laughs> <laughs> I try and sell a tape forks together to make a shuriken <laughs> to throw them oh i just remembered that but i used to love it but then i remember when karate. shuriken became illegal here i was little, uh-huh. little well it, yeah you couldn't get them and then chuckles you couldn't buy no. you couldn't buy and everybody, would make, everybody would make their own yeah i did a couple fucking broomsticks and, uh, and... <laughs> put a broomstick and like you go back in the day we used to like we had outside toilets as well, and you'd have a toilet yeah. system at the top. We'd have a toilet chain to pull, and we used to get a toilet <laughs> chain, and then used to hammer it into little bits of broom, and then you'd be like, "Yeah, look at me!" And then oh, it yeah. undoubtedly will snap off and go flying across the at some car. At some point, someone got hurt. Always, yeah, always. Not someone me. got hurt. Not, not me. No, not necessarily <laughs> you. It could be a bystander, but somebody yeah, got well, hurt. Well, that's okay then, as long as it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go, and then go, going on to weapons, studying them properly. So uh, I learned Nunchaku and very quickly had an affinity for it and became good with them. Mm-hmm. And then I started teaching the Nunchaku. I used to do a, a, the first dojo I was with. I taught the weapons mm-hmm. and I had we had like a demonstration team. We'd go around and do demos and stuff with Nunchaku and bow. And it was good. It was cool. Mm-hmm. But then I started studying it and looking at Demura Xian's work. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. You know, Fumio, yeah. Shitoru, Fumio that, that, was, that was the style that I had studied. Shitoru. Yeah. So so I've trained under mm-hmm. Fumio Demura once. You did? You met him? Yeah. Oh, he wow. Came, I never had came, the honor. He's yeah. The, he came, came to the UK to do a seminar. People, if you don't know Fumio Demura, I, I don't know. A legend. Uh, well, he Shitoru. is who Mr. Miyagi is based on. He played Mr. So all the fight scenes. He in... did the stunts. Yes, yes. He yeah. did, he but did originally, the... it was going to be him. But yes. he couldn't speak English. Yeah, so to, to, to this got day, to his Morita. English is still not... Yeah, he still doesn't speak great <laughs> English. But he, he like, because Pat Morita is American. He doesn't yeah. speak Japanese. Correct, yeah. It was Fumio Demura that, that taught him how to have that Japanese accent. Yeah. So there's, um, what a legend, man. What a legend. Netflix, on Netflix, there's a thing called The Real Miyagi. And yes. it's about... About Fumio Tomura's life. Fantastic. I saw it Fantastic. Too. It's also, there was a documentary when I was a kid that I still own somewhere in DVD format or something. And if you can get your hands on or maybe it's on YouTube. It's called Way of the Warrior. And it was done way back in the day. We're talking like. That's an old, old one, isn't old, it? Old, old. 70s. It's like from the yeah. 70s. Mm. And but it's these different guys from the U.S. different styles. It was one guy does t- Tiger Kung Fu, Kung Fu. 
uh, Fujiao, Fujiao Claw, and different ones. But Fumio Demira represents karate, and his demonstrations are just he's legit. Alleged, yeah, if you don't know about him. You need to have a word to yourself, really, yeah, because absolutely. people know people know about Funakoshi as Funakoshi is the father of karate. But the people argue that Demura was like the the father of American karate, really. Yeah. That really got it going mainstream in the states. Absolutely, I'm literally getting goosebumps right now as you're talking about him. I remember he was such an influence as a kid, man. I would read the stories about him and how he came to um, California and lived there. He was so poor, so whatever. That that yeah. story, you know, bringing it, it over, is. and he would and get then some students and whatever, and he, I'm started to doing point, a bit until he was doing demonstrations at the Hollywood Bowl yeah. and stuff. It was just well, it was his. He he was the one that changed what karate looked like yeah. because everyone was doing the the good umbrai, the gyakuski, the yeah. do this, the JKA stuff, and he started throwing people and doing the acrobatics and making it a, a spectacular thing. And karate exploded. And in fact, they wasn't very happy with him because back in, in Japan, they were like, what are you doing? You can't be doing this fucking nonsense, that's, this Mickey Mouse nonsense. That's correct. And the other th interesting thing about him too is because he, he was a, an amazing proponent of weapons. So his weapon demonstrations were incredible. Like that yeah. stuff where he put like apples on people's heads with nunchucks yeah. and, like, and, and, wep and all this kind of stuff. Um God, he was amazing. Is amazing because I, I he's still alive, but he went through. He's very day. he's he's very ill now. Yeah, I he's believe, very ill. He had a major illness. I believe it was a stroke, or I could be wrong. Something happened. He he um, was quite ill. Um, when I when did I when did I see him? Um, about nine years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was about nine years ago, oh, man, and I knew amazing. about it because. I knew about it because um, I was doing the idol. I've done the idol as well, mm -hmm, yeah. drawing the sword and cutting. Sword, yeah. uh, so it was through uh, some of the idol people I knew, and I got in touch with them, and I was like, oh, Demura's coming over. And again, it was a short notice thing. He's like, It was like a Thursday, and he was here on a Saturday, and I'm like, i got to get down there. And yeah. I got to, yeah, I'm there. i got to get yeah. down there. I would too, yeah. Lucky so we you. went there, and, and it was a full day's training, uh, karate training, doing the karate stuff on there, which was a bit like, eh, okay, but it's not Kyokushin. And you know, for, there was for people who don't people know, Shitoru, it's similar to Kyokushin that it mixes uh, Shotokan and Okinawa. It, it blends those two styles. Very different than, than Kyokushin, but it does blend those two styles. It, it's, it would be a good style, right? It's great style. But for, there's no contact. That's why I left it. So the stuff they do, you oh, you pause them. The stuff they do is very good, but yeah. they don't do it with any contact. Yeah. They never drill it with contact. They don't do bag work with contact. Yeah, so no. it's all the old, if I threw this punch, you'd die. So I can never throw this punch. It's yeah. like, yeah. but anyway, anyway it's yeah. still fantastic to train with him. And he's and legit. Then, I want to keep hammering home. How legit as they come. Well, yeah. no, he's above legit. He's yeah. the one who decides who's legit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then he did, uh, we did an hour of Sai. So yeah. I, Sai oh, is yeah. one of He's my amazing favorite weapons. with the Sai. That's one of my favorites is the Was Sai. he still able uh, to when you saw him? He, was, he would still get up and he would do a bit, but mm. he would be sat down most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Rangers we did the Iaido. Mm. Bato, bato do it was actually so you mm -hmm. got yeah, Iaido, yeah. a bato do predates it yeah, yeah so we did the bato do with the cut in and good and it was good doing the spin chaburis and and i really enjoyed it so uh, why, why and did then, it be important sorry go on there's more go, no 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 no. i was just going to say and then so we've done that seminar trained fantastic i've got a his book signed signed his side book nice. um and then afterwards we went for a meal with him Oh, so really? We managed to get into a little sayonara party, oh, and we awesome. had a meal. Did you so, get to yeah, talk to him at all? Good. Uh, did I, t I talk like even to hello him? or anything? Briefly, yeah, briefly yeah. when he was signing my book uh, yeah. through his interpreter as well. It might have been his daughter, I think, was his interpreter or something. Yeah, because um, yeah, we were looking at my book, and we were quite interested, because it's a, quite an old book, my one is, quite interested in what... Um, what edition it was they were right. like oh you you might have a first edition one. Oh wow but it wasn't the first edition it was like a third edition or something like that because right. it came out in the 70s or something like that right 
but yeah, so fantastic day. So I, you know, I've had a day of training with Fumio Demura. That's that's I had no idea. That's really really cool because I knew we were going to talk There's about weapons and stuff. Lots you don't know about me. <laughs> lots we don't want to know. <laughs> There's lots that people <laughs> shouldn't know as well. Uh, so why why would a Kyokushin person study weapons? Why should they? Because they always used to. You go, but you look back to the old days, the old demos. You look at look at the God Hand video. People are doing weapons. People are doing nunchaku. They're doing this. Look at the old demonstration with uh, Howard Collins, Shane yeah, Howard Collins. I know the one you're talking about. And uh, Shane Oyama. Yeah. But um, the American Oyama who went to America. What's his first name? American Oyama. Shige <laughs> American Oyama. Shigirio. Shigirio. Those are his Oyama. adoptive brothers, by the way. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that, but they still they 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 actually they are the real Oyamas. They're the real. He was sorry, he was the adoptive brother. He was a, yeah. yeah, yeah. So him when they did the demonstration with the sword and the, the tomfa, they were using the tomfa as well. So yeah, they, they, it was always being done. You just reminded me something. There was a movie that oh man, Steve would know the answer to this immediately. There was a movie that was filmed, a, a American movie with uh, Oyama, uh, which, what were the, the two Oyama brothers that were in the US? Shigeru? And... Shige, I only know Shigeru. I, oh no, there was another, we talked, he was one of the ones that went, he was supposed to be one of the ones that were going to go to Thailand yeah. to do the challenge. Anyway, so there was an American movie made about, it was almost the opposite of what you would think. It was this Japanese kid gets sent to America to live with his, I don't know, uncle, cousin, whatever. And he becomes an Uchi Deshi, but in America. And he studies Oyama karate because Oyama branched off. Yeah. You know, and they made this movie, but they never released it. Have you ever seen, have you seen a trailer or anything? Well, not if it was never released. There, there was a trailer for it. Everything. No, it was never, never, you, never, never heard about it. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because it's basically like a, kind of a kyokushin story yeah, right yeah yeah and it was, it's not that old uh anyway as we're messing around here i'll, I'll try to find it and uh because you just reminded me of that we'll have a look and put that in there but yeah. all these old guys they used to do weapon work yeah and it, it goes hand in hand with your those training. demos were amazing those demos were incredible yeah. it, it go, and there's a lot of, the thing is it only makes your karate better because you 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 when you're you, when you're whapping and then shackle around your timing's got to be perfect yeah. When you're doing uh, when you're doing the cuts and you're moving and precise, your posture has got to be correct. Yeah. So it only makes your karate better. But yeah, my, I tried to be proficient in the majority of Japanese weaponry. So we, you know, shurikens throwing stuff, uh, tantus blades, iaido, kendo, the sai, nanchaku, bow. I'm still trying but to get you with the the shuriken. <laughs> <laughs> I've got sure I still got. Do you know I got two shurikens in my drawer next to my desk? I bet you do. <laughs> I, I've, I'm always playing. I, I like things in my hand and, and uh, playing with like a shuriken or a blade or a knife. I'm always twiddling it and stuff. And I've got that on my desk, my work desk in the office. <laughs> People are like, "Oh yeah, that's a picture of my family. That's my, that's my tanto. Don't touch that. Those are my shurikens. Don't touch <laughs> tanto." <them." laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else? What else? So the bow, but I prefer the Joe, which is the shorter, shorter version, four foot yeah. one. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit. More, I, mean, I like the I like the longer six foot bow. It's a, but then again, it's very. You can only use that in open space. The yeah. Joe is more. You can use it in enclosed space. And the handbow, which is shorter again, the three foot one. Well, I like the because I I did uh, Filipino martial arts. They're mm. they're just like um, I don't know what they are. They're probably about twenty four inches, two foot. Thing. Yeah, the screamer, like a screamer, screamer sticks. Screamer yeah. sticks. And that's yeah. where I feel most com most comfortable with. But I think it's important just because, although it's fun to do and fun to look at and fun to, to mess around with, and for people who want to uh, want to just try it, you could take any kata, pretty much any kata from uh, from Kyokushin, yeah, especially yeah, yeah, the pinan katas, and just and just do them in like if you had a bow, you could do put it with a weapon exactly and move through them and 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 it's yeah it's essentially and it fun. is there, are, there is footage of people doing that and and i used to do that i used yeah. to do uh one we did what was pinan pinan yon yeah 
that was the one I used to do that yeah. with Nanchaku. I yeah, used yeah. to do with Sai. Yeah. Um, you can only, the katas are only really, you need to, you need to pit a twin weapon, Tomfa, Nanchaku, Sai, yeah. to do those sort of pinang katas. You, know, you uh, can do it with a bow though. I, I've done them with a yeah, bow. Yeah. Yeah. But they take the bow, like, well, Kyokushin Khan, so Kyokushin Khan, yeah. Royama's organization, has reintroduced weapons. Yeah, they so have. So part they of have. your grading, there is a bow kata. Well, one of their uh, shihans uh, comes from Okinawan karate. I think he comes from Shito. Uh, that I is... I can't remember um, his name now. No, I can't think of his name, but he's, he's like the number, he's the next one down from Royama. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to find this movie. I will find it, man, because it's driving me crazy now. Well, we'll search for it later and we'll stick it in the in the comments. <sighs> I guess. I guess. What what weapons have you done? What weapon work have you done? What I are you kinda, what I are you comfy kinda, with? I kind of mentioned the bow. It, uh off the top. The definitely most comfortable sticks. Sticks because a screamer sticks. A, a screamer sticks because I did it quite extensively for about as a teenager. Uh, I had a, um, a relatively close neighbor um, that I used to go to who was well-versed in it, and he trained me for about, about a year or so. Uh, so it wasn't a special school or nothing. It was in a garage. He was just mm. had he had a background in it. He had studied uh, JKD in the U.S., uh, Jeet Kune Do, and yeah. so that was the offshoot of it. So and I just had an affinity for them, and I really liked them. Um, one thing that, and I've even read articles with, um, like, I was joking earlier on Navy SEALs and stuff, but I have read articles around that you should be comfortable because the first thing you should go for before your fist is a weapon. It's a weapon, yeah. Like, like I'm just look, so, so I'm sitting here right now. I got my desk, my computer in front of me. I happen to have a pair of um, tweezers because I was messing around with a wire there. Like, this would be my first go to. So I should be able mm -hmm. to be comfortable with that. Somehow. Mine would be, I'd be smashing this vase into someone's head. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Or glass or whatever the case may be. And it is, you should be. Although we don't, the thing is, you don't walk around carrying weapons, right? But they're You're not around allowed to you. Today. Exactly. So uh, as we joked earlier, or Tom for a chair leg, that's yeah. what I used to use. A fucking yeah. broken chair leg as a Tom for. Anything. Pick a rock up and throw it at someone. Before yeah. They, but why, like, why would I go up and punch someone before I can just smack them in the side to have a rock? Basically, a rock is a primitive shuriken. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It is. Wep weapons first and then fist. But, you know, today, you were certainly in Britain. In Britain, if you carry anything with you with the intention of using it as a weapon, that's a big no-no. You'll be charged for carrying an offensive weapon. Well, you guys are pretty much a socialist communist Re state. Anyway, retarded. I, I we are retarded when it comes to self-defense. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild over there. It they've is. Got, if you they've, if, they've got you guys strung up pretty good. It's pretty much if you get attacked and you hurt your attacker, you're being charged. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. I mean, we're not far behind. Uh, but... You can carry guns. Well, yeah, we can have. You can have a permit to carry but uh yeah yeah more so in the u.s than canada it's harder in canada uh but yeah you can but you are not even do you know what it's you're not even a you remember the coubaton yeah of course well i i, I used to have a coup no, no no that's a baton the coubaton was a little oh the thing on the keychain yeah yeah, yeah, it's a nerve tool. It was yeah, a little yeah, nerve you could tool, like stick it in, like rah, yeah, rah. that was brilliant. They were, yeah, I used yeah. to carry. They were the yeah, rage you could in the nineties. Use 90s. it in your hand with your yeah. Yeah, everyone used to carry those. But if you were caught carrying one of those with, and you said it's to defend myself, boom, you'd be charged with carrying an offensive weapon. That's crazy, man. To me, that's just nuts. Like we used to. <laughs> the, <laughs> the way around it, they used to be thing. We used to have a, the torch, the mag light. Yeah. But you'd have a mic, you'd have a torch, right? That was two foot long with six batteries in it. That's your torch made of solid steel. That used to be like your security torch. You'd, it's a torch. What are you on about? It's like it's two foot long. It would be a little bat. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Companies started making things like that. I remember I used, I bought a crook lock for my car 
there was actually a short baseball bat made of steel Jesus. with a little flap on the end to put on your car steering wheel as a crook lock to stop someone breaking in. Oh, it yeah. Was effect- it was I, effectively- carry a base- I carried a baseball bat in the back of my car back in the day. For so why? Just in case. I had a baseball then bat. You'd, you'd be arrested. No, you wouldn't. It was in my Britain, baseball. you would be. In why? Britain, it's a sport, though. I keep my, you- keep my stuff in the back of the car just in case I'm going to a game. Yeah, you'd have to have your glove and your... It was. Uh, your the glove, bit. everything was yeah. there. You can get away with that. Yeah. But like today, now mind, they, they're like... I, I watched a video of someone being stopped the other day and he had a screwdriver in, in his door and that piece of, why have you got a screwdriver in your door? And he's like, well, for screwing stuff. He's like, you've got a screwdriver in your door. Why is it there? What are you doing? For fixing my car. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And That's... they're like, yeah, why, why is it there in your door? That's offensive weapon. <sighs> Terry, we'll have to have a conversation offline. Different conversation, this is. Terry and I have talked about, uh, yes, why uh, they have guns and we don't, or sorry, vice, vice versa. Well, you have guns and we don't. Yes. And well, America, I don't want America, guns. America, I America's. I know they got you brainwashed well. No, no, no. I don't want guns. I, I don't want guns in Britain to be legal, but we should, I like, there's nothing wrong with carrying pepper spray. You, do you know if you ca- allegedly? I read about this. If you if you're carrying CS gas or pepper spray, it's classed as a firearm in England. In Britain, if you're caught with CS gas because it's a oh propellant, it's classed as a firearm. Oh my god! You, you but Jeff are... Lemon's all right though, folks. You guys are. I can carry a bear spray. Yeah, a bottle of Jeff Lemon's all right. Bear spray. Not even allowed to ca- see. What if I'm attacked by a bear on my way to Asda's? Right, you're screwed. I've got nothing, nothing to defend myself with. What if your government attacks you and you have nothing to defend yourself? They do that daily. <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into governmental stuff. All right, look at this, folks. Listening. Look, look at this, folks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are we looking at? I'm going to show you something. Hold on, if I can do this, I hope I don't mess it up. Mm. The screen stuff doesn't share so well, does it? No, but I'm only going to share it just for a second because we can get in trouble. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Look at this. This is the movie. It's called Take a Chance. Take a Chance. 2015. Yeah. It was never released. Oyama Karate. He's got his army on there. There he is. Uh, that was Oyama. I wonder why it was never released. I don't know. I got to get to the bottom of it. I tried and tried, uh, but it was never. I tell you, I know. I know a few people in America. I've only been were... playing up to a minute before we get in trouble. Can you get well, can you the link hear it? Are you able to hear I, it? No, very, very, very quietly. Can't really hear what they're saying. And now we can a bit. Oh, she, oh, she, we'd have to have a look at this. <laughs> I mean, she looks like a good, good karateka. Baka. Baka, it's you die. All right. All right. That's enough. I'll put the uh, link in. I'm pally with a few people in America who trained under uh, Shigeru Oyama. He trained with Shigeru Oyama in his dojo. I'll Record. message them. Hardcore. What? You should. Hardcore training. I heard his training was very hard, legit. Oh. Hardcore. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was very hardcore. Um, and he, he was a legit guy. I'll message them and ask him about this film. Because... Yeah, please do so, man, because it's driving me crazy. I'm trying to find out, like, everything on it. Like, you can go to the – here, let me just – as we're talking, I'm going to go to the actual website. It's called Take a Chance, I think. Take a Chance Movie. And... So 2015. So we're, we're talking like six years ago that was yeah, done. So it's not and... an old, old one. No, if you or is go... that when it was uploaded? No, no, no. This is when like it was ready to come out. You can go to takeachancemovie.com. You can watch the trailer, the synopsis, cast and crew, director, producer. I don't know what ever happened to it, man. I don't know what happened to it. So it was Psycho Shihan Oyama... Uh, like it, it's crazy. Like, and it and looks that's so it. good. It looks so. so oh, you know who else is in it? Who? Sonny Chiba, legend. He's in it, is he? Yeah, yeah. Sonny Chiba's in it. He's a friggin' legend. Well, uh, Sonny Chiba used to 
play like Sosai. He played, back yes, in the day. He play, yeah, I played Sosai back in the day and amazing gangster movies and stuff. But yeah, I know Scott said they then Psycho Sheehan uh, Oyama. It's not Psycho Sheehan. He's a psycho, uncontrollable. <laughs> it's Psycho S A I K. Was in there. It's a term for a Sheehan of an area who's in charge of that area. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that sounds like sorry, a good film, was, though. That was Psycho Sheehan. Yeah, I know. Psycho Sheehan. That sounds like a fucking amazing movie. I, I'd, be, <laughs> I'd totally be down for that one. Let's get anyway. on to Tom. Let's get on to Tom. We'll get it done and we'll make a film. I'll, I'll play myself in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But Tom is actually a good connection. I should, because Tom is so connected in the uh, entertainment industry. Maybe he could yeah. find out what happened to this movie and why it was never released. Because yeah. I, it shocks me, especially within the Kyokushin community itself, it would be huge, let alone just karate. The thing I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it got blocked from from going out. But the thing is, it's not. Blood. It doesn't. It's not. It's not Kyokushin. It's for Yama Karate. No, I don't think it has anything to do with Kyokushin and stuff. I bet you it's political, but I don't think it has anything to do with martial arts politics. As it has. When nothing. did um, uh, when did uh, Shigeru Oyama die? Not that long ago. Um, was it around about 2015? Speaking. No, no. Was it around? After. After. Here, I'll, so the film, I'll look it up. So the film was made before then Sh Shigeru Oshan died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in it, I believe. Um, we ha we'll have to. Dead air. It's gone dead air. You can't Not have dead, dead air. You, you need to keep entertaining the folks. He died... <laughs> He died one year after. He died February uh, times. February 14, 2016. This people, I'll start messaging people and finding out and having a look. We'll put this link, though, in the comments for people to have a look at it. Yeah, That'd if be anybody awesome. knows, man, if anybody knows and get to the bottom of that, somehow we could get that movie out. Because, it, it, uh, I'd love to see that. It's the same mm -hmm. as like with, with Fighter in the Wind, the story of Oyama. Exactly. It was a bit, I think it could have been done better. It was a little, it could have been sponsored by Velveeta. It was a little cheesy, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it, uh, it, um, the, the thing with this one is what frustrates me is not like you hear these stories. Oh, they started a movie and they never finished it. And this, this friggin' movie is done, complete, edited, ready to go. Someone's put the kibosh on that. Somebody put the kibosh and I don't know why. Yeah. Back to weapons. We were talking oh. about weapons. Mm. Um, I was gonna. I'm gonna put. A, I'm gonna put top prints of videos out of weapon work because I haven't done weapon work for ages. I used to be all the time doing it weapons training with this training with that. Do it modern. You grab a screwdriver and stick in and the... stab Bryn. That's <laughs> just you like just make me do it. It's gonna <laughs> stab, stab Bryn right, right neck. Bryn. <laughs> next video we're doing now. We forget the headbutts. It's oh, be poor a Bryn. Screwdriver in the poor. neck. Poor Bryn. I don't know if people watch you, the videos, but poor Bryn. Bryn. Listen, Bryn hams it up. He overacts all the time. I'm barely touching him. <laughs> but we will. I love to um, I start doing some weapon work again and get him mm -hmm. out. And I, I wanted to do, so like the weapon work that I really said was the Sai, yeah. Raphael, Nunchaku, <laughs> Michelangelo. Yeah. The swords, are, and it's not a katana. If Leonardo didn't use katana, he used ninja toe, two straight bladed swords. Correct, so the katana man. is you, curved. You know your old school ninja yes, stuff. I know my stuff. <laughs> um, and Donatello would use the bow. So I had to make sure I was proficient in all four of those weapons because I wanted to be a ninja turtle. It's too bad they're canceling the ninja turtles now. No, they're not. Yeah. It never happened. Yeah, it's no. being canceled. No. Yeah, cultural no. appropriation. <laughs> what culture are they thinking from? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's, there's some sewer culture, but there's people living in the sewers sewer. going, those bastards, they stole our life. Sewer culture. <laughs> there's people who live in the sewer. I've seen documentaries on it. There's alligators in the New York sewers. And there's people who live, there's a whole community down there you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> seen it <laughs> anyway God, this show's I'm going to put I'm oh. going to put some videos out on weapon work because it's good work and it helps your pot it's good for grip strength controlling the weapon control I love the Sai Sai is probably my my favorite weapon 
What was the original um, farm tool, the Psy? I'm trying to remember. Well, it um, was originally the Psy was used as like a furrower. So you'd go in the soil, you'd put a hole in the soil. Oh, that's right. Plant the seed in. That was right. That, yeah, you're correct. Yeah, yeah it was like a right. prong. And early, early Psy's were used in threes, funny enough. So you had the, the pair of side that would use as your main, and they're mainly against the bladed weapon. Yeah, because it caught it so well. Yeah, and but then, then you, you would have a th- you'd have a third smaller side in the back of your belt that you would throw. Mm, okay. So okay. again, we said beginning of a fight, you've yeah. got that one side, you'd throw it, it'd either hit him or it'd miss him. Then you'd fall back on your, your pair of close quarter fighting that you would use. Look at the, the history of the tonfa is also pretty impressive because even though it came from this weapon that was like a farm tool, whatever, it made it into modern day police. Like Yeah, the police it became were... the PR-24. Is that what it is? Yeah, you, 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 you know your, your police nightstick. Yeah, nightstick. Yeah, it's the PR-24. I'm going to look that up, see if Terry's full of shit. <laughs> no, he's correct. Have you, 20, not, have you not learned 24. your fucking lessons, Scott? <laughs> PR24. He is correct, kids. That is the. the so why the do you even epitome. doubt me? He... <laughs> okay, so that so the the tomfa, um, and again, okay. Now we tend to have a tomfa today, and it's like a round one. But the older ones tend to be a flatter version. Yeah, the one I have that I trained with in Shitaru is, is a flatter, kind of a squarish kind of. Yeah, a flat yeah. square one. Yeah, so yeah. then. It leaked it for the police use. It got changed to the PR24. And what it did, they had a, a longer handle at the top, a longer grip, and a slightly longer stem. And they used they put a pommel on the end so you could use it for smashing glass, smashing wind. The PR24 is a fantastic weapon. But it tells you, I mean, the validity of that weapon, like that it it, tra- it transposed from, you know, this martial art into actual it's, uh, it's a, it's a good diff good defensive weapon yeah, not so pr- much attack protect- it's excellent protection. for defensive a little bit i don't know man if you punch somebody and you got the street oh yeah you do, you do some damage on it <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit cumbersome, cumbersome and it's only recently not cucumber cumbersome i said cumbersome <laughs> it's it always struck me as odd it's not the easiest weapon to learn it's not no it always it's, it's, it can, it's a little bit it's awkward it's a little cucumberish, yes. It's very, it's very cucumber. <laughs> it's a little cumbersome, so it is odd that that weapon made it that way. But so. that's why the police. So only recently, like our police, uh, in the last ten years, they were carrying the PR twenty four, the nightstick. Yeah, well, they uh, switched and they the don't. Head. They, they don't switch to the, anymore. No, so they carry the asp, which is the extendable steel baton. I don't know what that. Is. I don't believe you there either. Got to Google it. I'm joking. Oh, fucking I'm Google joking. it. <laughs> I'm joking. No, it's the same here. It's the same here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, most so police forces now carry the ASP because yeah. it's a much. You can do much more damage with it in a quicker way. You can smash out the ASP. is brilliant, and people mm. think that steel ASP, the telescopic bat yeah. ASP, is a make, but they call it ASP. It's a baton. People yeah. think you're hitting it like a bat. You don't. You whip it yeah, like it's a, a fishing spring, rod. Like it's a. <laughs> Yeah, you would whip that asp into it, and he would. The thing is, he would break bone, but not yeah. break skin. That's crazy. So you could break someone's wrist with it, but not break the skin. Isn't that crazy? It's a fantastic weapon, tool. <laughs> tool. It's, a, it's my pointing stick, officer. I point the things with it. Yeah. Well, you could also take a f- telephone book and punch through it, and not leave a mark too, and do some injury. You know that trick? Who the fuck has a telephone book these days, <sighs> dude? I could tell you stories. Maybe I'll tell you <laughs> the police, the police, my friend. I've seen the films. They used to beat you with a telephone book. They didn't beat you with it. They would hold it against you and then punch the telephone. And hit book. you with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you stories. I, uh, I'll have to try that on Stu's. <laughs> try it on Bryn. <laughs> try that on hey, Bryn. Bryn. Right, folks, this is why I don't know. Where the fuck are we going to get a telephone book from? Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> we... <we're, laughs> We used to have them, the yellow pages. Holy big shit, fucking you're thick right. thing like that. Yes, but you're like, where, where are you going to get a telephone book from now? We don't have them. I am enjoying my new setup so much. The headphones are so clear that I don't even want to get off this uh, episode. 
<laughs> we're, we're, only 56, we're only 56 minutes and we said we're going to do a one hour episode it's unbelievable i can't believe how i now i'm so happy this is so crystal for me like i can hear my there's no I, before it was weird because i would hear myself no feedback it was a little it was not good you know messed with my brain phone box where we're going to get a phone book from jesus no, I'm going to do it. The next Backstreet Karate video will be me hitting Bryn through Bryn, a phone run, book. Bryn. Bryn. Run, I mean. Bryn, you're listening. Bryn will be listening to this tomorrow. When we're training, we need to find a phone book. Oh, if we yeah. can't find a phone book, right, we'll yeah. make do with a newspaper. I told you I was going to find you a new instructor, Bryn. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Bryn is loyal. Bryn is loyal. <laughs> he's, he's drinking the Kyokushin Kool-Aid. <laughs> He's in, he's in, he's in for the long haul, Bryn is. Bryn does jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah, uh, Bryn's a blue, blue belt, belt in BJJ, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Which, which came first? Jiu-jitsu first. It's funny. So he was doing jiu-jitsu and I, like my dojo is not far from him. So mm. he rocked up one day in his jiu-jitsu top, <laughs> like walking in with his top to bring his daughter to train. Yeah. So I, I trained his daughter, Ava. And he rocked up with his BJJ towel. He was like, this is karate. Is he? Yeah, I'll be back later to have a look at this and see what it's all about. And then so his first lesson, he obviously got fucking battered. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, he had a trial by fire. But then, you know, he, he loves it. He loves it. He's very much into that. Oh, he loves the spirit. That's awesome, though. though. He's, he's, he didn't give up the jiu-jitsu, though, I hope. No, no, no. He's still doing it. So, awesome. so he's got, like I've said, he's got a fantastic combination. Yeah. BJJ and Kyokushin. Yeah. Um, so, it, and he's reignited my BJJ. That's great. Yeah, so I was it's just funny. Gonna ask, do you guys grapple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we grapple in the dojo anyway, the karate grappling style of it. No, I mean like straight BJJ. Yeah, we roll. It's, yeah. We don't call it grappling. We call it rolling. It's my BJJ sign. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Terry Burke, folks. Terry Burke. But we do. Uh, it, and I'd say it's funny, though, right? Because his his instructor's instructor is uh, Pedro Bessa. Yeah. Now, about about probably 10 years ago, I used to train with Pedro Bessa. Okay. And, and had my, you know, only for a couple of months, I had my little grounding in it. Um. But it's nice. So we're back now with then and reignited my life. I said, you know, I want to roll. I want to get back into it. I want to learn, you know, better moves. Because like you I said wrestle? before, you won't want to wrestle. <laughs> so like I said, in, in karate terms, I'm a Jedi on the ground. In BJJ terms, I'm Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, so I, I, yeah. I want to learn it properly because it's completely different. Once you start learning so, and you understand the movements and it's like, oh, it's like a, it's a it's a chess game. It's a chess game on the ground. Yeah, yeah, me too. I heard uh, it was, I think it was probably Rogan talking the other day about he's making the analogy. The goal. Oh, I think he was talking about Eddie Bravo, his teacher, and saying that uh, the goal is to get to the point where you jujitsu becomes like tying your laces. You know how you just don't think about tying your laces. You just yeah, like nobody thinks about tying their laces. The ultimate goal is to get to a point where your jiu-jitsu that you're just tying laces, right? Uh, but, I mean, that's totally applicable to karate as well, right? And, it, and that's where we get to, isn't it? When you're sp The point is, you're not thinking about what techniques you're using. They just, you, you, you see an opening, bang, and the leg comes up. Like, I've caught people with kicks before I even knew the kick had gone. Yeah, it's I like, think oh, I've kicked you. People get very fixated on, um, they even did when I was in Kempo, people will get very fixated on, especially when you're doing bunkai and kata and stuff, oh, the movement's supposed to be like this. And and I and luckily I had a great instructor who was like, no, it should be whatever your reflective uh, yeah. motion is. The, yeah. These things are just, just tools to help you. It's a guide. It's yeah, a principle of yeah, movement. Exactly. And this is why people, when they're doing their bunk guide, the hand must come here. But no, not really. What if no. he's six foot five? Your hand exactly. wouldn't go there. Exactly. So it just be it's loosely reflex, based on that. Reflex, reflective movement. If your natural thing is to somebody that comes at you is to do this, well, what, what can come from that? Exactly. Um, and, and that's your autonomic response. And it will be. And if it's ingrained in with you, why would you change it? You should just build upon it and go with it. Krav yeah. Maga is great for that. It goes with your natural. Krav is, very, Krav is excellent 
for actual defending. But again, a fault with one of the faults with Krav is it lacks power because they don't train for power. Yeah. They don't train to hit. I've trained with Krav guys and they come in ba 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 moving the arms and it's like, whoa, it's fun awesome. But you're not damaging him. You're not doing anything a, to him. Same thing in Kempo. So it was famous for its multi strike. I could hit you twenty one times in a second. But yeah, you're still just, standing there. Look at, you still <laughs> stood there looking at me going what what the fuck was that? Yeah, that was fast. But you know what they're also famous for. Oh, I don't want. I'm not bashing on it because it was a great system. But one of the things they they would hit themselves as much as they hit their opponent for the sound <laughs> for the sound effect. So if I'm doing something here, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And isn't it funny how that's developed? Oh isn't yeah. It funny how people like we do it. Some do the same with Uchuke. They hit oh, yourself. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Get that snap <laughs> yeah. because you're so used to doing it on their own. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's kind of funny. It's it's funny, yeah. and they'll try to play That's it good. off that it's actually no. It's the torque of the. Get... It's the talk. Yeah, it's the talk. Yeah, it's you're a... talking shit. That's what <laughs> you're <it is>. talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> hey. Exactly. Right, we are at one o two, so we All should right. round it up. It's been a good one. We've covered some good stuff, yeah, as yeah. we do every week. Well, I don't know that last one. <laughs> last, yeah, last week was a bit there. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, but no distortion tonight as well, though. It's been good. Yeah, um, let's we, see now. And it look, looks clear. So let's, let's see what happens now. So now that I know the whole process, so when I hit stop here now, it does its thing in the, that witchcraft thing it does with uh, yeah. Zoom. And then when I download it down, see what happens. But Yeah, so, they so good. They come. But like I look at, I'm looking at myself right now. It's crystal clear, 4K. You look amazing. Yeah. But it's all like fingers crossed until I've lost it. And I've been, I lost it. You've got a bit of cotton hanging off your, oh no, it's your arm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. On that note, cat. <laughs>